Okay. Thank you very much. So next we're going to have Ms. Cohen talking about why the Notre Dame policy is good. And after that we'll have a cross-examination by Mr. Floyd. Well, I truly can't believe some of the stuff I'm hearing about why we should have cell phones because it's the biggest bunch of baloney I've ever heard. And here's why. You and I both know that when you have your cell phones available in class and you are texting, there is no possible way that you can be listening to your teacher and texting at the same time. So texting in class is a huge disruption in your learning process and your parents are paying a lot of money for your education. So that's my first reason. Um, the second reason is that the research shows that frequently students use cell phones in order to cheat. Now I'd hate to believe that that were true about Notre Dame students, but we know that it's possible if you have available cell phones and your friend texts you after you take your test block one and asks you what some of the questions were, very easy for you to text them back and say, um, here's what's on the test. That's cheating. We don't want to have that available for you because that is an honor code violation and that would get people in a lot of trouble. And the third thing is that even if we let you use it on campus, we have a community here whereby at lunch and at break, we hope that you will be interacting with each other, or interacting with your teachers. And the bottom line is, when you have your cell phones, it's a very uh, individual thing and there's no interaction. So I think it's very disruptive to the community at Notre Dame. And those are my primary reasons. I could go on, and I will, I'm sure, in my next little speech. But um, that's the reason why we think cell phone policy should stay exactly the way it is. Thank you, Ms. Cohen. And now we're going to have a cross-examination by Mr. Floyd. And I'd also like to remind you guys to please stay quiet. Please. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, you made a you made a couple of arguments. Let's, let's address them one or a few arguments. Let's address them one at a time. Uh, first of all, you talked about uh, the use of cell phones during class, uh, and, you know, possible cheating and so like that. It's basically a bogus argument. We never proposed that. We never proposed the use of cell phones during class. We we're talking about during free blocks, during break, lunch, that sort of thing. Can't cheat. Last I checked, during lunch. <laughs> Well, now I stick it back. I've seen people jump line, but yeah, there you go. That's really true. I'm not sure how cell phones fit into that. Uh, so, uh, how would you uh, like to respond to that? Well, I would like to respond to say that students can cheat at lunch by using their cell phones to text message answers to students who haven't taken the test in the afternoon. So, they certainly can cheat at lunch. Bogus argument right back at you. Oh, no, it's still a bogus argument. If the teacher's given one version of the test, then that teacher's not thinking <laughs> You make the comment about you make the comment about it's not a good sense of community when we're talking when you're talking on the phone you're kind of don't they have a right to decide which part of, which community they want to be part of? They do have a right to decide which community they're part of. But when you're using a cell phone, you're part of a cell phone community and not the community at Notre Dame. And we feel like if you're here, you ought to be a member of the community of Notre Dame. So you believe we should be able to dictate who they can talk to when they can talk to? Well, I believe they can talk to anyone they like on campus. Oh. Okay. <laughs> There's more, but we'll come back to that. Thank you, guys. And please stay quiet um, when people give speeches. Um, so next we're going to have, again, from the affirmative team, Mr. Floyd. So please give it a
is all useless. Let's take one, too. All right. Uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. We all know the cell phone policy is bogus. It needs to be fixed. It's broken. We need change. The time for change is now. Oh my God. We're not asking for anything that's unreasonable. The ability to use your cell phone during three block, during lunch, during break. Come on, who's harmed? It'll destroy the fabric of our community. How many of you actually buy that argument? Okay, there you go. There you go. All right? It's not harm. You have the right to decide who your community is. Okay? If that's someone, that's if you want to talk argument. to somebody outside of the school during a free block, you should have that right. The whole cheating argument. Come on. That one, that took some real imagination to come up with that one. <laughs> that's not an issue. And if that is an issue, again, as I said earlier, the teacher should have at least two versions, maybe three versions of tests. If you, I have two econ classes, I have two A-push classes, they do not take the same test, okay? So, the cheating argument, come on. And nobody's arguing about cell phone use in the classroom. That is, Coach E and I both agree, that's not cool, all right? So, remember, November 4th, change. <laughs> So now he's going to be cross-examined, so get back up here by Ms. John Cohen. I'm sorry, Ms. Cohen. Well, Mr. Floyd, you stated earlier that um, cheating wouldn't happen because teachers frequently have two versions of the test. When you write two versions of the test, do you have completely different information on the test? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Sure they don't, because you know how busy they are. Shame on them. Well, uh, change. we changed our policy last year, and the reason it was changed was because of the faculty input, all of whom wanted a stricter cell phone policy. How can you then argue that it doesn't take away from the community at Notre Dame? It doesn't. <laughs> Does it take away from the community? No! no.